Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to start off by uh, giving my condolences uh, to the individuals and the families that were impacted uh, with the uh, Virginia shooting. I know we had um, two of the young men that were local at uh, Woodland High School as well as Huff High School here uh, in the area. So uh, our prayers go out to them. Uh, in regards to practice today, uh, I thought we had a pretty good practice. The intensity was good. We, uh, of course, we had the pads on today. Uh, it was a great start to what's going to be uh, a hard-nosed physical fall game uh, on Sunday. And with that, I'll take your questions. Jeremy Chen expected to go this week? Or? Uh, I'm hoping so. It, it's still work in progress right now. Uh, I thought he did some good things today with limited reps. Uh, you know, we still got to see how he recovers each and every day from a standpoint. Uh, you know, the soreness and, you know, does he have any kind of relapse? How did Baker look at practice and, and what – has the team improved on since he last started? Is going to help him maybe up his level of performance now? Uh, you know, I, I thought he did well today. You know, it wasn't nothing over the top. Uh, again, it's early in the week, but just the consistency that I'm looking for. Uh, I, I thought we, you know, we ran the ball uh, well. That's what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. And, and again, it's really taking the pressure off anybody that's playing quarterback that they don't have to really sit back there and try to win the game for us. Um, but you know we're going to try to establish what we do up front, which is the line of scrimmage, and give him a clean pocket when we do try to push the ball down the field. I know, what, are you, what are you looking for from Baker? I mean, uh, Sunday? Consistency, you know, protect the ball, uh, good operations with the offense, you know, getting us in the right looks, and uh, in execution. I know Miles hurts field and Chin's status are both up in the air. But if those two guys are able to go, how much does that help you with replacing? Dante Jackson, as far as the way the moving pieces in the secondary go? Uh, depth is always a plus, but also when you have quality players like the two that you just mentioned. So uh, hopefully they're ready to go. Uh, Dante is definitely going to be missed. He's a leader uh, in that room as well as in the locker room. So, uh, but guys got to step up. Keith Taylor, uh, Tay Hayes, et cetera. Uh, uh, TJ Carey was with you in Cleveland in 2019. What did you like about him that made you want to bring him back in? Uh, smart player, uh, can play inside as well as outside. Uh, I feel like he can pick things up quickly if we need him this week. What was your first impression of Baker when uh, when you were together in Cleveland? Um, alpha male, you know, a uh, guy that really uh, loves the game, competes. Uh, I think we all saw that when he got here, when he had the high ankle sprain and was just really fighting to get back on the field. So uh, I think the teammates respect a guy like that. And, um, you know, I just love the way he's handled the situation. Uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, you know, still being a great teammate, still encouraging PJ. Now he has his opportunity to step back in and perform. I was there when Lamar Jackson entered the league, and he was, you know, one of the most exciting players coming out of college. I think a lot of people still view that about him. But how has he evolved, in your opinion, as a quarterback? I think now in year five for Lamar. I think he's gotten comfortable in, in the system. Um, you know, Greg uh, Roman has been there for a while, so. Uh, they work well together, um, and you can see he's just dynamic, you know, when he gets the ball in his hand. So, uh, and he plays, he's plays with a lot of confidence, you know. He's talking about a guy that came off of being the uh, league's MVP, so uh, he's definitely a weapon. The Ravens have, the, I think, the number three rush defense in the league. You guys have obviously been a pretty ground and pound team. Do you like the challenge of facing a team that's, that's a top tier unit? On defense, when you when you have an offensive strength like this, oh, they're they're a good defense, and I, I don't really try to look at it from a, a standpoint of challenge. Uh, they do some great things. When you talk about their defense, uh, they've been in that system for a while. You know, I know the coordinator McDonald's coming back, but he's been in that family, uh, so they do a great job just with their different multiple looks up front, the different blitz schemes that they create. Uh, so you know, we try to keep the focus. I try to make sure the focus stays on us and the things that we got to do. I think the biggest thing is just confidence. I think you see that uh, with his play. I see it every day in practice with his approach and how he goes about his day-to-day -day operation. And uh, I think with building that confidence in practice, he goes in the game and just executes. He only had one catch last week, but it was critical. You had Jalen before practice. He wanted to ask you a question today. How does Baker attain to the sideline? 
Uh, so, I'm sorry, say it one more time. How does Baker return to the starting lineup affect the offensive scheme this week? Uh, it really doesn't affect it in regards to that we try to change things based off which quarterback is in the game. Uh, I think, you know, those guys are real familiar with our scheme and what we like to do. So we're going to continue to do the same things. Steve, you guys, you were in Arizona in 2020 when you all drafted Rosen. This 2018 draft class, how much time did you spend around these quarterbacks and what, what was your sort of over, uh, overall evaluation of that class? Uh, I felt like the, it was a good class coming out, uh, as you talked about with Baker, Rosen, um, you know, Sam, um, all those guys, uh, Allen. So um, great class. All those guys had their, their, their strengths and weaknesses, you know, as, as we've seen over the years. Uh, and you know, Joe, I don't really like to try to go back and get into comparisons, but uh, I felt like overall it was a very deep and uh, talented class. Do you remember spending much time with Lamar? I uh, did not spend a lot of time with Lamar. Uh, I knew a lot about him. Uh, and his talent coming out because I knew a lot of the coaches at Louisville. Did you have him ranked one through five? Where did you have him ranked in that group? I can't even recall where we had him ranked. And, and if I did, I probably wouldn't tell you. <laughs> when you're playing a team that's coming off a bye, is there anything that you do since they have extra time to watch you to kind of throw a wrinkle in here or there and change anything or no? No, again, I try to keep the focus on us is, is just – Every week, you're going to evolve a little bit based off the different schemes that you're uh, faced with. So, uh, whether they're coming off a bye or not, I think it's always an opportunity to be able to see what they do and then try to throw a wrinkle in there, uh, because they're going to always, you know, try to adjust to your tendencies and things that you've shown on tape. So, uh, each week we try to evolve and do something different. There, there had been some concern before the season that uh, Sam Franklin might be on the verge of not making the roster. Yet here he is, special teams, leading the team in tackles. How have you, what have you noticed from his development of a player, you know, at the start of the season to now? Who, who said that he wasn't going to be on the roster? Where would the speculation come from? Just reading various news reports that sort of said he was on the bubble. Oh. I know obviously they don't know much. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the middleman. Okay, I got you. Uh, Sam has done a tremendous job, um, and I emphasize and talk all the time about special teams is not an inconvenience. Uh, it's a major part of what we do, and I just mentioned it today how I love the way he's embraced his role. He wants to play more uh, at this eighth position. Uh, all guys do, but uh, his role on special teams is a critical part of our success. So um, I think he's really put himself in lines as really trying to be considered as one of the Pro Bowl players this year, the way he's played. He's one of your Pro Bowl, he's your Pro Bowl rep for special teams, and normally that's an internal coaching nomination. When you talk to maybe Chris about this or, or Bruce or whatever, wh why, was it, why was he the guy? I think consistently, uh, you, when you look at his consistent play throughout the year, I mean, he's shown time and time again to make plays in all four phases, you know. So uh, I'm excited about his opportunity. What kind of person does it take to be a great special teams player when obviously the goal is to be on the field every down, but to refocus and to contribute however you can? First, you got to be unselfish, you know, um, just – unselfish play, you know, it's all about the team. And then you got to have a certain grit about yourself. I mean, there's certain plays that you guys don't see that I showed on Monday. Uh, Sam is just phenomenal where he just goes down and just – he gets knocked down, he gets back up, he goes and makes the tackle, he splits the double team. You know, they can't, you know, hold him on the outside. So, uh, just being relentless. Steve, having a – when they have a tight end like Mark Andrews, one of the better ones in the league, change anything how you do – no, you better know where he is at all times. You know, I know he's been out uh, for a while. I assume that he'll be back this week, particularly coming off a bye. Uh, but you're right, he's one of the top guys in the league. Um, he's good in line. Uh, they split him out uh, from a standpoint of as a true receiver. So uh, he's definitely a weapon in what they do offensively. With that said, how difficult is it to play man coverage when you have Lamar behind, behind center? Uh, it depends on if you have a spy on them as well. So you just, you know, there's different ways you can do certain things, but I don't think that has to limit us to saying that we we're not going to play man to man against those guys. I think you got to pick and choose uh, your opportunities and how you uh, go about it. But uh, you know, we're going to mix things up. You know, uh, they create an extra element with him running the ball. I always said that, you know, from a standpoint of extra gap. So we got to be sound in our our reads. Got to be disciplined in the things that we're doing up front.
Steve, on Monday you mentioned how long it's been since Sam has gotten regular season reps action. How can you get him some of those opportunities without outright starting him? Well, I, I think it's just, you know, trying to pick and choose uh, the flow of the game. You know, it's something that I mentioned to uh, those guys the other day uh, with Baker. You know, if it happens, um, you know, just giving him warning that I'm not pulling you. I just want to be able to get Sam some opportunities because the first time that he goes in there, I don't want it to be the first time. You know, so uh, I want to be able to get him uh, acclimated a little bit uh, to the speed of the game. As I mentioned before, he hasn't really played live uh, since last year. How likely it is, how interested are you in doing that this weekend? I'm interested in winning the game. So whatever it takes to win the game, uh, it's, it's not, you know, pay $250 and you get to play. So uh, we're going to see exactly how it goes this week. Appreciate it. Thank you.